First of all, thank you very much uh, for, for the opportunity. Um, in my circle of friends, um, they often ask me what I do, and then halfway through my first sentence, they fake falling asleep. So it's always nice to have somebody looking remotely interested. Um, uh, I decided that you know, it's, uh, you're manufacturing, as the remark about uh, China um, just implied, you know, it, it doesn't, we, we don't exist in a vacuum anymore. We're not that protected anymore. And, uh, and there are a number of challenges that we face, but in order to, to speak about those challenges, we need to recognize <coughs> the context in which we operate. Um, and so uh, since uh, in the last week or so, uh, the whole, uh, our relationship with the BRICS countries have, uh, have uh, been in the media quite a bit, I thought that, that I should contextualize my presentation to you um, this morning within, um, within that context. So uh, first off, I think we should just have a look at why uh, manufacturing is important. And I, I suppose you could have guessed that I would have gone to the old jobs issue. Um, it is still a great concern in South Africa. Um, and it is, uh, you won't, you won't uh, always say that from our politics, but it is our biggest problem, um, no doubt. So uh, it's, it's something that we need to address. And if we are going to address it effectively, clearly we need to focus on uh, the sectors of the economy that is going to help us overcome this problem the best. Um, and um, we certainly think that, uh, that manufacturing is that sector. Just a, a little bit of historical context uh, where manufacturing has come from um, in, in South Africa. You can see that this is all contribution to GDP. Um, so it's not absolute, um, but you can see that there was, uh, in, the, in the late 70s, early 80s, South Africa um, had quite a strong uh, manufacturing sector relative to other sectors. And then it started to decline um, uh, roughly over the last um, 30 years uh, without, uh, without really slowing down. There are a lot of uh, reasons that are being put forward for, for uh, this decline. Some people say that... Uh, that you know, uh, we have turned away from employment intensive uh, sectors because we have got legislative barriers such as uh, the Labor Relations Act. Mm -hmm. Other people point to other dynamics. This graph represents uh, absolute uh, um, uh, growth and, and decline. And there, um, it really tries to relate it to a, a number of, uh, of uh, um, I suppose, historical occurrences that can be grouped together under you know, the apartheid policy, the expansion due to democracy, and then later on contraction due to um, what our research suggests is infrastructure bottlenecks, uh, which is not uh, uh, controversial, uh, but more controversial um, is uh, unfavorable macroeconomic uh, policies um, exacerbated uh, by the, the global financial crisis. The way, of course, that you measure the contribution of any sector to, to an economy is through its uh, multiplier um, effect. And there you can see that, uh, you know, the, the value output multipliers for um, a one rand investment, um, um, uh, the value multiplier for agriculture and manufacturing is, is the greatest. And of course, there is also a very close relationship between agriculture and manufacturing. So agriculture feeds manufacturing in, in a great uh, number of instances and vice versa. Um, the second one, the employment multipliers for one million rand investment. Manufacturing creates three jobs versus 3.3 .3 and 10.5 jobs in um, wholesale and retail and agriculture respectively. Um, and is again in the top three in terms of the export multiplier, the fiscal revenue multiplier. This uh, uh, table just represents uh, what contribution manufacturing could make um, in terms of uh, two uh, growth scenarios. A low growth scenario of 3.4% would see um, us uh, uh, co uh, contribute 158,000 jobs to the economy over the next 10 years. A 10% uh, growth rate would see us contribute uh, 454,000 jobs over the next 10 years, which is certainly not um, insignificant. But of course, uh, we face a number of challenges. Um, uh, you know, in, in the BRICS context in particular, um, and here, you know, I think the important thing to realize is just that South Africa really does have 
talent um, even within that context as a manufacturing um, destination. Um, you know, if you look at a simple uh, or, or quite a well-known rating, such as the Global Competitiveness um, Index, then we see that in terms of our partner um, countries in the BRICS uh, setup, we are um, the, ranked the best in terms of our institutions. In terms of our road, port and air uh, transport infrastructure, it may not be relative to developed economies, but certainly within, within that grouping, our uh, goods market is efficient. Um, we rely on professional management in this country, which, which is not always uh, recognized to be the case in our pa partner countries. Um, our financial market, as we just heard, um, is quite uh, developed and stable. Um, and then there are key issues uh, related to manufacturing, such as supply quality, international distribution, uh, decentralization of authority, um, quality of research institution, institutions and university, industry collaborations, which again may not be as well developed as in developed countries, but certainly amongst the BRICS counterparts, uh, we rank better. Um, the graph there on the side uh, gives an indication of the competitiveness rankings. The lower the bar, the more competitive you are. Um, and we rank second only to um, China at this stage, which we will see um, later is for reasons that are quite out of our control. Actually, it's illustrated on this slide. Um, our domestic market size simply never will be able to equal these, um, and neither our foreign market size. Um, and then you know, there are also the additional, um, additional factor of our uh, relative um, prosperity uh, per capita um, to these, which is also um, quite, quite out of sync. Allied to, to that, or along with that, um, the Global Competitiveness Index also gives a very interesting, um, or, or allows a very interesting comparative um, comparison. Um, it allows you to have a look at which of us are the freest in terms of the trade that we offer or, or the trade that we engage in. And as you can see, the bars for South Africa is by far the lowest, um, going up uh, through Brazil, China, India and Russia. And the question that is continuously or more is increasingly being asked, especially, um, well, not only by us, but also in the West, is uh, how free is uh, free trade really if if the people that you or, or your partners that you trade with are not as uh, are not as open to um, with their markets as we are with with ours, and in South Africa we've certainly um, felt the impact of that uh, in very particular ways. We've done um, surveys from time to time in the manufacturing circle, and there are particular areas where where our members are experiencing great difficulty. Automotive glass products is a is one. Error, you may have heard that there's an ad campaign on at the moment by uh, one of our members, uh, PG Group, who uh, reminds you to uh, buy um, South African manufactured um, windscreens because of A, the quality aspect, uh, and B, the fact that it, that, it creates, um, that it creates jobs, it puts money back into the economy, um, and it sings the Shosha Loza song and tries to make you feel warm and fuzzy and hope that you'll remember to do that when you go and, and make your purchase. And uh, we are now actually trying to look at, at extending that um, into a broader buy local campaign um, on behalf of the manufacturing circle in its entirety. But it's not, it's not for, um, it is for good reason. Because clearly there must be something wrong if the products come into the country at prices that are lower for, for which we can source the raw materials inside the country. Um, architectural glass products are experiencing the same problem. Um, various uh, paper products, steel products, electrical equipment. There's uh, uh, an example of a manufacturer, uh, a local manufacturer that is the only manufacturer on the continent that supplies um, uh, small electrical components such as plugs and so on. It's, it's the kind of thing that you will buy at, uh, at Builder's Warehouse. And uh, um, at a certain stage, they just realized that products that look exactly like theirs are coming into the country at much lower prices. Um, also being sold at Builder's Warehouse, but the products are not of the, um, of the same quality, therefore making it A, difficult for them to move their products on the market, and B, also tainting their, um, their uh, uh, 
reputation because the products are indistinguishable um, uh, on, on face value. Agro-processing is, agro -processing is of course another, um, another area that is experiencing great difficulty. Um, in 2010, the average farm in China derived 17% of its income from um, state subsidies. In, uh, in uh, Belgium and in the Netherlands, you have a situation where they land raw potato at the factory gate for a third of the price that we are able to get it at the factory gate here. So you can imagine that if you are somebody that produces uh, frozen chips, uh, seed laboratories don't get built, um, infrastructure in the rural areas don't get built, um, upgrades to, to uh, manufacturing facilities do not happen when they are supposed to, to do. So how do these uh, import certain South African manufactured goods? There are various uh, situa well, examples that, that we've come across where they do not uh, comply with the regulations set out by uh, South African national standards. Um, the standards authorities are struggling to cope with this, as are our borders, uh, because uh, when you want to, to import into South Africa, you supply a golden product, uh, you get your certificate, and then you don't necessarily have to keep on complying because everything that comes into the country does not get inspected. Um, uh, uh, exporters to South Africa, often in collusion with local importers, will use incorrect tariff headings to avoid paying duties. Um, under invoicing also occurs in the same way. Um, and it's, it's difficult to detect because our Customs Act actually um, uh, makes it illegal for us to identify local importers of specific goods coming into the country. It is not a situation that is consistent with what is happening in the rest of the world, and it is quite an old law um, coming from 1964, so we are, we are working with SARS at the moment to see if we can get that changed. Um, dumping due to lower global demand, different rules for imported products, and then um, subsidies in countries of origin, which, which uh, I have already addressed. So while South Africa is exposed uh, due to inherent uh, competitiveness issues and, and trade exposure, local manufacturers perceive uh, China's trade sp uh, posture in particular as, uh, as quite predatory and uh, regularly raise concerns which are quite consistent with, uh, with the literature that are, that are emerging from a more, shall I say, a reactionary American authors such as Midler and Navarro. Um, and, and these are that... Uh, you know, it, it just also kind of highlights that within that grouping, the BRICS grouping, the, the dynamics are different and the aims are quite different. Um, Chinese export subsidies uh, certainly hurt us. There's perceived currency manipulation by uh, China, which, which, you know, is not, uh, it's not difficult to convince people of it once you, um, once you bring out the graphs uh, versus um, our other currencies. There's perceived lack of respect for intellectual property, perceived lack of respect for the uh, domestic environment. Um, they do not comply with certain um, uh, environmental regulations. Um, other economies do, which gives them a cost advantage. Weak working conditions for Chinese labor, export restrictions, predatory pricing and dumping, spurring fears of subsequent price gouging. Um, uh, that happens especially in, uh, uh, in, in some of the um, heavy metal markets. Um, and then protectionism. Um, we are not alone in having experienced difficulty with China in particular, um, and our BRICS partners have, have all responded in different ways. Uh, Brazil, um, as China is its biggest trading uh, partner, and it has certainly be one of the, been one of the most proactive, uh, pressuring for greater access, uh, uh, raising their trade barriers. Um, India, in turn, has, has pushed for access for specific uh, uh, projects and, and uh, infrastructure investment. Russia, um, of course, has got a, has got a, a, a different geopolitical um, kind of relationship with, uh, with China, which have seen them uh, push for, for specific uh, bilateral growth plans and, and infrastructure investments um, as well. Um, so, you know, it, it certainly won't help if, if manufacturers as a grouping in this country just complain. So we try and, um, you know, contribute to the debate and the actions to level the playing fields more. Uh, we do that a, by uh, producing relevant research. We've got a quarterly bulletin that we bring out. Um, it gets posted on our website and, uh, 
and uh, gets advertised to the media. It's launched at a press conference once a quarter. I think the next one will most probably be launched on the, um, on the 16th of August. Um, and that has become quite a lobbying and a, a effective lobbying and advocacy tool for us. Uh, we do high-level lobbying and advocacy on key issues uh, which are listed there. Uh, we, because we outside of the social dialogue um, structure, we don't fall under BUSA. Uh, we don't really work through NEDLAC because we already, our members are already uh, separately um, part of, of uh, different uh, industry associations which are already connected there. Uh, they also tend to deal with labor issues which we try and, and do not deal with to allow us some white space to cooperate with labor um, on issues such as trade and monetary policy. Um, so we, we focus on high level um, government officials and, and politicians. Um, we have bilateral working groups with the DTI with whom we've uh, cooperated very well um, over the last uh, six months. Um, and then uh, there are joint campaigns with key stakeholders key stakeholders such as labor, other business formations and entities such as Proudly SA, such as on buying local um, and uh, 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 pro-manufacturing uh, monetary policy stance. There are certain imperatives which, which we believe is quite important for the, the promotion of South African manufacturing. Uh, the first being adopting a more strategic and constructively assertive posture in key multilateral forums such as BRICS and the WTO. It doesn't help if we go to government and identify a problem, go to ITAC, do submissions for countervailing duties or whatever the case may be, and they just say there's no way we can raise countervailing duties against China or whoever, whoever the, the a country of origin may be. There must be a reason, there must be a context. And at the moment, especially in relation to China, that context is very murky. Um, so we need to understand that better. We need to understand what the strategy is. And we need to understand that if we are not as assertive as other countries within that forum, why that is the case. Um, we, need, uh, we believe we need a review of our fiscal uh, policy to, to avoid uh, the bunching up of administered price um, increases that, that we've seen in the last couple of years. Um, and also perhaps a review of monetary policy, um, with specifically um, in relation to the support of a more effective, not effective, but more competitive um, rand exchange rate to support South African manufacturing. This is a controversial thing, but from our side, we believe that there are, there are always trade-offs in all of these choices that you make. And you, it's, a, it's about the direction that you want to go into. If we're going to say that manufacturing is a is a key priority, then clearly that has implications for monetary policy. It's also supported by recent, uh, recent events. In the fourth quarter of last year, we have consistently seen the RAND trade at more competitive levels, um, which, which actually boosted the, the manufacturing sector, created employment um, during that period. In the first quarter of this year, um, the RAND was stronger again, and the performance of the manufacturing sector was significantly weaker. In the second quarter, now uh, with PMI yesterday out, one of the key issues that, that really supported the resilience of manufacturing, even though it's in a state of decline at the moment, is the fact that the RAND is, uh, tra has traded at more competitive levels. Um, then policy certainty and, and security around key issues such as electricity apply. Th this is something that you'll hear probably from every um, uh, business uh, formation. Um, and then, but particularly for us around the trade issues, is improved coordination, coherence, and unity of purpose uh, between our different institutions that are involved with trade administration and facilitation, such as customs, ITAC, ITEC, ITED, and the standards authorities. And that's pretty much it. So um, I hope I didn't uh, put you to sleep. <laughs> but uh, if there are any questions, then I'm happy to take them.